I built a game with Unity in four hours. Look, I'm not a game dev, but I am curious. And this has to have been one of the funnest things that I've done this year so far. And I've done a pretty good amount of fun stuff. Now, I don't have any glorious story for you as to how this inspiration came about, why I even wanted to make the game. This all started through a random conversation. I was in a meeting with a colleague, we were facing a problem, needing a solution. And I thought, and I said to my colleague, hey, why don't we make this problem and solution into a game? And before my colleague could even respond, I was already down the game dev rabbit hole. Should I have been paying more attention to my colleague's response? Yes. Do I have issues with obsessing over things? Also, yes. Sorry. Now, the game I initially wanted to build was a little complex. And if I learned anything from the indie game dev YouTube tornado I visited, it is to start small. So I tried to do just that by embracing the saying, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery and imitate a game. That game happens to be Flappy Bird. It seems simple enough and I wanted something that I could actually just create on my own and think through it from beginning to end. Let me show you how I did it. The first thing I did was choose a color palette because even though this is my first game and I know it's going to be pretty trash, at least I want it to look okay. This is what I chose. Next thing I did was go into Adobe Illustrator and create the simplest character I could. Now our character needed some obstacles to avoid so I created some spikes. At this point, my lovely wife made the observation that my character looked like a wall plug. Yeah, that wasn't soul crushing at all. So I decided in that moment that the game shall be called Pluggy Jump. Like and subscribe if you think the name is amazing or terrible. Our first goal is simple. Make the plug jump. In order to make the plug jump, we had to import our assets that were exported from Adobe and then convert these assets into game objects. This then allows us to modify the components of each game object using a C-sharp script. So now I've imported my simple character, converted it to a game object, and called that game object player. Now I can associate this script with it to make our player jump. Now if I press spacebar per our script, then our character should jump. Let's check it out and see if it does. It works. Next, let's get our obstacles loaded in as game objects and then test and make sure the game still works the way it should. Okay, so we have some obstacles and we have our character, our player, who can jump still. But we're just jumping in one place. We're not really moving throughout the spikes, so there's nothing really to dodge. The Flappy Bird experience is not happening right now. Let's try and fix that. Now, it seems a lot easier to actually make the spikes move around the player than it does to make the player move through the spikes, especially when we think about what we're going to do later, which is have the spikes auto-generate in at specific timed intervals. So that's what this script is for. Okay, awesome. We have spikes that are actually moving, and we have a player that can jump through those spikes. Yeah, of course, we run out of spikes, so we need to fix that next. But this is really cool. And I also noticed that even if my player hits a spike, nothing really happens. So we're going to address that too. Let's solve the spike problem one thing at a time. First, we need to make sure that as the spikes leave, that they don't stay around. That can impact game performance. So let's establish a boundary using a script on our spike objects so that every time it passes a certain point, it automatically deletes. That's what this script is for. Awesome. Now we can see the spikes auto delete as they leave our scene. This is great for our game's performance. Now, as a next step, we can focus on how do we generate new spikes as old ones are deleted. We're gonna address that using another script so that at specific time intervals, we can spawn new spikes. I also wanna simulate some sort of collision. Right now, our player will just go directly through the spikes. So what I did was added some polygon colliders to both the player and the spikes. I did that by adding this piece of code to the player script and by adding the polygon colliders as components on each of the prefab game objects. Let's see if it works. Awesome. Now we can see the spikes auto generating on the right and deleting when they go out of bounds on the left. And if you notice here, my player, when it hits a spike, actually behaves as if it hits something. We're getting close to being done with our game. The last things that we have to do is be able to keep track of our score and restart our game on collision. First, let's create a score script that keeps track of our score and increments our score at specific intervals. The next thing we want to do is add a piece of code to our player script that handles the restart of the scene on collision. 
thus restarting our game. After that, we add a few sound effects, and this is the final product. Now, I know that this game definitely needs some more polishing before I would even think about releasing it, but it's still amazing to me that I was able to do this in four hours on a random Sunday. I really appreciate it if you watched up till this point. Love you guys. Bye.